New research suggests that the earliest humans living in Canada's oil sands region can be traced to 13,000 years ago. To talk more about this, I'm joined by Assistant Professor Robin Wywitka of Edmonton's McEwen University. Okay, Professor, why is this significant? Um, it's significant because we've had trouble dating archaeological sites in this part of the world in the past. Uh, this is up in the boreal forest, so if you can imagine, you know, the... Uh, typical Canadian forest landscape of pine trees and spruce trees, um, very dense bush that produces very acidic soils. So what happens is that any organic material that we usually use to date archaeological sites, think of charcoal from campfires, bones, like at Head Smashed In, Buffalo Jump we have here in southern Alberta, they all get decayed very quickly. Mm. So we need to find new ways to date sites, and that's what we did. So when we were when we're working with sites in the Fort McMurray area, we have very few actual ages of the sites. I see. So does this finding mean people were there before we thought they were there? Um, archaeologists have thought people were here for that long, for, for a long time. Um, but we've never been able to, again, confirm it with a, a radiometric age. So like something that is directly dated. Uh, so this is the first time we've been able to do that. Archaeologists in the past have used the shapes of arrowheads uh, to infer how old the site is. And, mm. you know, they're pretty much right, you know, based or, or consistent with our findings anyway. Um, many archaeologists had thought that the people were here very early just based on the characteristics of the stone tools and the fact that they're consistent with other old stone tools, particularly in the... Um, in the, in the Plains region. Sure, but using technology, you were able to confirm it and kind of narrow it down a bit. That's right, yes. We used a new technique uh, for dating archaeological sites. It's an old site or old technique that's used in earth science a lot called uh, infrared luminescence dating. Uh, and basically what happens is mineral grains, even though they look really smooth, if you pick out a quartz grain from your sandbox, it'll look really smooth. It actually has a lot of imperfections. And those imperfections actually collect radioactive energy when they're buried. So they mm. start to fill up through time. And we know the rate at which they fill up, so we know how much energy or electrons fill up that little hole uh, in one year. And when we take it to the lab and measure how much is trapped in there, we know how many years it was buried for. So. That's how we used uh, new technology yeah. to assign an age to the site. That is fascinating. So tiny, tiny particles that you're... Very tiny. Yeah, no kidding. And so yeah. what would it have looked like back then? What would the people roaming the lands encountered? It would have been very different. Uh, for one thing, a big, giant mega flood had just gone through the area. So... If you could imagine a lake that extended from northwest Saskatchewan all the way to South Dakota, that was Glacial Lake Agassiz, and it had pooled in front of the continental ice sheet that was pulling away from this region at this time. And at about 13,000 years ago, the drain plug on that lake in the northwest outlet let go, and it carved the Clearwater uh, River Valley and then followed the Athabasca River Valley. Mm. So it would have been a very barren landscape, just recently scoured by this big flood. And also, we're talking uh, having a, about having a continental glacier about 200 kilometers away at this point. So it's very cold, it's yeah. very windy, yeah. and there's a lot of sediment blowing around. So this is why we get our sites encased in this sand that we can date. So fascinating. I uh, really appreciate you coming on and speaking to us today. It was my pleasure. Thank okay. you.